Anyway, I'm going to start a new project. Gahooligan, whoever else is wanting to learn this, if you got a second and you have at least Blender 2.9 or 2.93 like I'm using, pop it on up and put it on an extra monitor. I'll put on some... I'll put that music back on. Yes. Sculpt mode, randomized tool. All right. New project. You know all this, I assume you know all this stuff over here, like the object and its materials. Hitting control tab and switching to rendered, or Z, the Z key, switching to rendered mode. So you can move the lights around and change their color and all this stuff over here whatever the object is you, you go to its you know, like material like oh it's got a uh, a dark material but what if we go in here and subdivide it and change a couple of these add another material slot make a new material select a couple of these and assign them to this material and there look you've got this object with these two materials and whatever you change that material to here, it's going to affect everything in that object. It's just a, it's just a plain material right now with this irregular diffuse. But anyway, just the, the reason I'm going over this before we get into the grease pencil is the grease pencil uses materials. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show, I'm gonna make a little basic animation when I get in here. But you see how, and you have these slots. Whatever you put in these, like I'm gonna make another material that's just solid black. Now, why is it that when I change this material, nothing on that object is changing? It's because I haven't assigned any of the faces on this object to that third material slot. So you want to click between these two, it's selecting the different ones. If I wanted to select all of these over here and change them to that, you would click that material and click assign. And now when I go back out here, see, it assigned it to that black, that third material. Not this specific material, but this third slot. See, I could go in here and change that to this or, or make a completely different material. It's, it, these faces are not assigned to this material. They are assigned to this third slot. So if I come back to this later, I don't even have anything selected. And I go to this third slot and change it to another material. Even if it's the same one as this one up here, doesn't matter, it'll still be changed when I set it back. You see what I mean? Because these faces are assigned this material slot. So anyway, that's materials for an object. See, I make a copy of this shift D, make a copy of the object and go over here and change this third material slot to a, if, if I change this material, material three, it's gonna change it on both of them because these two objects have a slot that shares material three. I'm going to go to this object and make a unique copy of that and call it material four. So now when I change it, see, it's not changing this one over here because I've made a unique copy of that material. You can double click it and, and call it boof bag or, or whatever. And it's going to be a different material, material three, pre B Phoebe. See? And these slots are just unused. There's nothing that's been assigned, but they do have them. So I could delete these slots and nothing would happen. If you delete a slot that has a used material in it, everything on that object that uses this material gets pushed up to the material just above. So anyway, now you have a basic grasp of how materials work on an object. And that's how you select all, like if you wanna, you wanna change the material in this slot, you click right here and go, these are your existing materials. 
so you can change it to green and this slot to blue because that's what those faces are assigned to. Anyway, new project. Discard general new project. We're going to do a grease pencil object now. You know when you delete the default fault cube, you can hit shift A and add a mesh and add whatever in. And it's an object. You can duplicate them, rotate them around, do whatever, right click, set them to smooth shading or set them back to flash. You know, these are objects. You hit tab and you can go in and edit the individual geometry of this specific object with proportional editing up here. It's one of my favorite tools. That's that specific object. You click on this one and go into edit mode. All these other objects, you can't do shit to them. They're isolated. It's so like in Photoshop when you double click on a layer and all the other layers go like bright white or whatever. Anyway, this is how these objects, and then you hit tab to go and edit the geometry. It's just exactly how grease pencil objects work. But look, I can go to sculpt mode, control tab, sculpt mode, and, and you know, individually sculpt this object because it's the one I have selected. This is exactly how grease pencil objects work. Okay, I'm going to hit control in start a new project again this is a trust me just just follow everything i'm doing you'll understand so i'm going to delete that delete the default cube and we're going to go into this camera keypad zero or viewpoint camera right here active camera numpad zero that puts you in if you hold middle mouse and move around, it takes you out of it again. So hit keypad zero. Making a scene. Yeah, you, you go up here to make your scenes. It's the same way you make materials, rather. Or layers on the scene. That's It's your layers on the scene here and everything. Anyway, we're in the camera now. If you're out, just hit keypad zero and you're in the camera mode. So this is the view that you're going to render. If you hit F12 right now, it's going to, you know, render this image. There's there's nothing in it right now, so it's not going to render anything. But you're in this camera view and you hit Shift A and let's go down to Grease Pencil and add Stroke to Stroke. And what that's done Sorry, what that's done is it has created an object. This is a grease pencil object. You're not going to rotate it. It's facing the camera right now. Yeah, you have to select camera. Like up here, like in a default project, you have camera, light, and cube. Delete the cube. You can click camera up here in your outliner and then move your mouse into the viewport and hit keypad zero. It'll toggle it in and out. You can tell if it's working right there. If you have another object selected, it doesn't matter. What, whatever object was set as your default camera, and this one is in a brand new project. So we, okay, anyway, moving forward, we're in, we're in here. I'm gonna click on the stroke here. Before we draw, we're gonna go down and look at its materials. It has, mate see, these are all strokes. These are stroke materials and then one fill material. What I'm going to do, I'm going to click on these and I'm going to delete all of them except for black stroke and gray fill. So these other lines, I don't need them. I'm just going to delete them like that until it's just black and gray. You can undo if you mess it up. So the only material that's actually being used right now is black, the black stroke material. If I hit tab, you know, control mouse three to zoom in. If I hit tab, and go into edit mode. It's just like edit mode for 3D objects. You got your vertices. You can turn on uh, proportional editing up here. So when you hit G and grab it, you can use your mouse wheel and make that bigger and smaller. I always have this on. So when you grab something, you can edit your lines, rotate them, all that. So if you have an individual stroke, you can, you can go in and edit. You can Alt-S changes the thickness. You can select everything and Shift-Alt-S to turn it into a circle. 
and all that good stuff. But anyway, this is edit mode. This is what editing in your grease pencil in edit mode looks like. You can't do this in drawing mode. Oh my god, what is he doing? Anyway. You can do you can do rotating, you can do all this shit in edit mode. Now to draw, to actually do the drawing, you go up here, it's up here, or you can hit control tab and go to draw mode. When you have like out in object mode here, like we're in object mode, you know, I can add a cube over here, whatever, you know. We select the grease pencil object. It's very hard to select if you don't have any strokes drawn in it. So just remember, you can, if you know where the origin, the little orange dot, the zero, zero, zero of that object, you can drag around it and it'll select it. But if you have a stroke or something that's visible, you know, it's like if you don't have any drawing on the object and it's just an empty object, it's going to be very hard to select here. So you can just do it up here. The object is called stroke. When you add one in, it's just called stroke or monkey or whatever type you, you add in. <laughs> so down here, your timeline is down here. If you've ever used uh, Adobe Animate, Toon Boom, the timeline, we're gonna go down here and change this window to the dope sheet. It's right here, dope sheet, second one over. This is where we see the keyframes for the drawing change it to dope sheet and then where it says dope sheet you have to do this i don't know why it's not default but you have to click on it and set it to grease pencil and open your summary here and look you, you'll notice that when you click your object again you you, you to you make a window go to dope sheet change dope sheet to grease pencil and these are your keyframes look there's there's your movie if you hit shift space it starts playing. You know, set your frame back to one. Frame one, this is your timeline. If you use Adobe Animate, if you've ever used Toon Boom, you know, where you have the layers of your objects and then the timeline, this is it. This is the dope sheet right here. So we're gonna move it and these are your keyframes. The one up here at the top, just if there is a diamond there, that means that somewhere down here in the layers, there is a keyframe on this frame. You, you click this one and hit G and you can move your keyframes around. See how it disappears? If I put the keyframe after the current point of the timeline, these are your keyframes right here in the dope sheet. This is the line layer. This is the colors layer. This is your eyeball, what's visible, what's locked. This checkbox, you turn those off, it holds it at that frame, no matter where you go in the timeline and what editing you do affects it on that frame. I almost never use those, so I just leave those turned on. That means it freezes the, the frame at that layer or whatever. Anyway, thank you, Ding Dong. So, hey, everybody with me so far? Is it, uh, Hooligan, anybody else that, that's following along anything that I've gone over that you don't understand? All right, all right. <clears throat> so, like I said, just like with this object here, you've got materials new material on the on the cube here Ooh, look at that yeah whatever but on your grease pencil object here you know, I'm gonna delete that it doesn't matter you see an object mode remember up here in object mode you've got your stroke here and you've got your your colors layer and your lines layer right now see you've got a keyframe on the color and lines you can move the fill layer it doesn't matter because there's nothing on the fill layer right now to actually draw, here we go. You go up here and set this to draw mode or whatever shortcut you have made, or you can hit control tab and it brings up this menu and just go up here to draw. Now we're in drawing mode. This is an edit mode. This is an object mode. It is its own unique thing for drawing. If you don't want this floor to be in the background, you can just go up here and click that and turn it off. 
I'm gonna leave it on now just for the hell of it. These are your tools over here. I never, this is annotation shit. I never use any of this th for what I do. I, I use draw or I use fill. I don't use erase, I don't use any of this stuff. You can, but I, I just don't. I, I draw or I fill, and if I want to erase part of this line, I go into edit mode. I might download it and, and edit this at some point. But uh, anyway, so we're in drawing mode. T and N. T shows and hides this menu on the left. N shows the properties menu on the right. This is just your little gizmo and stuff. I'm going to turn that off. That's your, your gizmo menu. You can, that's this right here. You can click that and... It's just, you know, the compass and, you know, whatever stuff. I don't need it right now. So N, hit the N key and go to Tool. Thank you, Spiffly. Appreciate that. So on Tool, what you have clicked over here, see Draw and Fill? It's going to change over there. If you ever use CSP or Paint Tool Psy or anything like that, this kind of probably looks familiar. You can mouse three. Hold mouse three and go through all the settings for all that. It's kind of self-explanatory. If you don't know quite what something is, move your mouse over it and keep it still. And see, it'll 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 bring up a little thing that says what it is. So anyway, go up here to the draw tool. There are three things when you change layers or, or anything, you have to change your tool, your layer, and your material. It will become muscle memory. It is a pain in the ass, and I have very intricate keyboard shortcuts. Uh, hold on a second. Anyway, so pencil, if you see when I start to draw now, I've got this, I have a tablet, so my pressure sensitivity is on. Here you go, this is the radius of your drawing tool. This toggles pressure sensitivity. But you notice you're getting like this, this light line or whatever here. You have to change this. For, the, for what I use, I click this and change it to ink pen. That sets all the settings, the hardness, all of this stuff down here that you can figure out on your own. I won't go over this. Hardness is, you know, if, if you don't have it all the way up, then the line's kind of soft. You set it at 100, then, you know, it's thick. If you don't have it at 100, then it starts getting, see the soft edges here. Control mouse three, zooms in and out. So anyway, I use ink pen with a hardness of 1.0, so it's just, you know, like vector lines. This is drawing. Go ahead and go ahead and draw a couple lines. Just draw, doodle, whatever. And now you can't. I mean, you can use the eraser. You can go over there and pick the eraser and do this if you want to. But I go in and edit individual lines in edit mode. So you would go up here and go to edit mode. This is exactly like edit mode for the 3D objects. I think tab is still the default. You can go in here and go into edit mode and depending on you know what you have you can grab individual lines if you're using this proportional editing tool and it's like well I want to grab this one line here this one and and have it edited but not any of the others affected so you would open this and set it to connected only so now see it only affects which line you have selected your mouse wheel up and down will change the AOE. <laughs> so that's how you go in and edit strokes. You, uh, one, two, and three up here. One, two, and three. Just like for vertex, edge, and face selection, one, two, and three here is vertex, full line, and intersections. See, three is the intersection. It'll, it'll pick just a part that's intersecting lines on the screen. 
I never use it. I only use one and two. One, you can pick one vertex and then hit two and see it'll automatically select it. And it'll, it'll select the whole thing. You know, th this is the thing. It's it's all just what you see in the background. See, I can I can turn that background off, and go in here. You delete the floor, in the axes. Go into the world. You know, change what you want the background to look like. Let's see, I forget how to do this on this screen. Yeah, you set it to rendered and. You know, you just set the world background. <laughs> but anyway, you know, in edit mode, you can grab, hit X to delete, and specific points, you can just delete only the points you have selected. W changes between your type of selection up here. I like it on the lasso select. I always leave that on. You can hit X to delete only the points, or you can hit X and delete whole stroke. So it's like delete the whole stroke connected to anything you have selected. See, it deletes the whole thing. So that's the different ways you can delete individual points of your grease pencil in edit mode. So see, I have, a, I have an empty grease pencil object, but yeah, and you notice the frames disappear down here because nothing's drawn. So I'm gonna go back to draw mode. Let's draw a quick doodle. Sometimes it'll disappear and you have to go back out to object mode and click on your grease pencil object again. Are you still following? Like, I haven't done anything that's left you behind or confused you or anything. I can go back over it if I need to. And just enjoying some Tchaikovsky class. Watch it, Jim. Лучше, чем ничего. Как сказать по-русски? Better than nothing. <laughs> я, я точно не знаю. Anyway, anyway, um, dope sheet and timeline. Uh, the timeline, the regular timeline, changes things like object X, Y, and Z. Like, like here, I'm gonna make a new project completely, totally new again. Control N. Don't save, just general project. All right, this is the timeline, regular timeline here. I'm gonna click the cube. Where it is right now, we're gonna make a, a keyframe. I'm gonna hit the I key, and we're gonna add keyframes for location, rotation, and scale. So now you see where you might have to pull this out and open your summary. See if you keep branching out. These are all the things that I just added a keyframe for. All of these, these nine right here. And you'll see them here. The keyframes here work exactly the same way as they do on the dope sheet. So now this object has a keyframe at this position, this scale, and this rotation. Now I'm going to go to the end of the animation here at the 250th frame and we're going to hit G and left click we're going to R rotate it R R go into that six axis just you know rotate it like that and now I'm going to hit S and scale it so we have changed the location the rotation and the scale of this object at frame 250 and I'm going to hit I and I don't have to keep hitting location. All I have to do is hit add frame for all available frames. So it's for all these down here. I and just add available. 
and look. See, now it's added all the frames. So now when I play the movie from frame zero, it's going to compute everything between these. You know, if you know motion tweening, this is the same thing. See? And there's the movie. You can click this and go into graph editor, and, and there's the curves of everything that changes. You can select all this and hit the R key, rotate it, S, scale, G, X, and Y. You can change, just like it's on a 3D plane, you can rotate these. I don't know why you would ever want to do that, but this is every, every aspect of your keyframes that you just have is in the graph editor. This is the Pixar shit. This is where you go in and hit the T key and change it to linear or ease in and ease out all this stuff. You can grab the edge of this, change the curve, all of that. All of that is here. You just expand these, turn on and off what you want to see over here. But anyway, this is the timeline. The timeline shows like physical animations and changes of slider values. That's everything in this program is a sliding value. I can go here, move it up here, I, insert available, I, A, and then move here, hit G, move it around, spin it around some, I, A, and then move here, move it way out here, I, A, have it here, scale it really big, rotate it around, I, and then A for available, and look, now, now we've got all this crazy shit going on. That's how you animate in Blender. You hit I to insert a keyframe, and these are all of the things that are affected. You can grab a couple of them like this, and hit G, move them around, whatever you want to do, and, and have everything get all wobbly and crazy. Different aspects. So anyway, yeah, this is the regular timeline, not the dope sheet. Dope sheet, I don't know what else it's used for, but the dope sheet is to, it's your Adobe Animate thing. Anyway, that's the timeline. The dope sheet is for your drawn frames. We're gonna make a new project to get back to the grease pencil. Control N, general discard. So keypad zero to get into the camera. We're gonna click the default cube. We're gonna hit X and delete it. We're gonna add a grease pencil object, but this time we're gonna add one that already has strokes and fills and colors in it. So hit Shift A, go down to grease pencil and add the monkey. So now you've got a, a, a monkey grease pencil. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna keep, look, look at these materials for the monkey now. You see it's got, you can see if you zoom in, it's got these strokes, and then it's got like the eyes and the skin and everything as fill objects. I don't know why it puts it at like the off rotation there, but anyway, we're gonna go into edit mode, control tab and go over to edit mode or up here, you can always get your modes up here. I'm gonna select all of those lines. Go to the adventures, kiddo. Grod, uh, thank you for the 100 bits. Appreciate it. We're gonna select all of them and just hit X and delete points, whatever, everything. We're gonna delete everything. So now, pull this up down here, change this icon to dope sheet change dope sheet to grease pencil open your summary and you'll see Suzanne and then Suzanne's layers these are the layers for this grease pencil object we don't have anything drawn yet but we're going to and see it deleted everything it deleted the monkey but this object still contains these materials even if you haven't drawn anything yet so we're at frame one. We're not going to mess anything up. We've got a keyframe on each of these at frame one. Even if it's empty, that can still count as a keyframe. A keyframe can contain nothing. 
Sometimes you'll want it to. But anyway, we're going to go to draw mode now. Go up here and go to draw mode or control tab. And we're going to, okay, this is what you got to do. You got to pick layer, tool, and material. So layer, let's, we're going to draw lines, right? So layer, click on your line layer down here, lines. Your tool, make sure you have the draw, not the fill tool, but the stroke tool here selected. And now your material. These are the materials. We're going to use just black, the black stroke. And remember, like, uh, I don't like the line being faded like that. So I'm going to undo that. Hit the N key to bring up the tool properties tab over here. In bring N and T, T and N, T N. <coughs> and you're going to open up tool and click on pencil and set it to ink pen. Or you can do airbrush, you can do whatever you want. It's just, I prefer ink pen, I always do. And now, if you've got your tablet hooked up, you can draw all this stuff. These are your strokes. You can undo, redo, whatever. So I'm gonna draw some strokes. There, there's my strokes. Now say, you know, remember, go up here, click on this, turn off the floor turn off the X and Y if you don't want to see that stuff. You can turn every overlay off by clicking this button. Brush settings are here. Radius, you can set your radius to be however big you want it here. You set it to one and be tiny. God, you can't hardly even see that. Jesus Christ. Look at that Annie Haley scene. But anyway, this, this little icon, the, the pin with the ripple, that toggles pressure sensitivity for that property. If you have it turned off, it's just going to stay flat at whatever value is shown here. If you, if, you, if you ever used Photoshop or Illustrator or anything, you already know what this shit means. So I'm going to go ahead and skip over that. Advanced. Now when you go into edit mode and hit A and select all, you're going to see all your vertices. If you're like, okay, th these lines here have way too many vertices on them because th that does this, this shit. Grease pencil takes up a lot of file space if you don't have it optimized. If you wanted to optimize all of these lines, you hit F3 and search and type in ADAP, adaptive, adaptive. And then you go down here and open your simplify stroke thing that comes up, say like 0.001. Or, you know, adaptive 0.0001. What? Oh, or, yeah. There. See, the, and then the more you type in, the more simplified it gets. So if, you, if you're ever drawing and you have, like, way too many vertices here and your file's really big, you can select your shit and go to adaptive. and set this to however much you want to simplify it. And you can go back and forth with that slider. Oops. You can go back and forth with this slider until you click off and hit enter. So just so you, just so you know, like later on, like when I draw all of my frames, it's like 300 megabytes, and then I will simplify them just a tiny bit, not, not, not a whole bunch, just, you know, like, just a tiny little bit like that. You see the difference between this and this like look there's so much there's so much you can do that hardly even affects the artwork you can also kind of do this for squiggly stuff but there is a better way for that anyway that is when, when you're drawing later and you have a bunch of frames you can turn on multi-frame editing up here and select all of them in the timeline and select all of them here and do that adaptive stroke and and optimize every single frame you've drawn with one keyboard click, or one click and one keyboard key press. Like it just, so just remember that, that's adaptive. Type in ADA, ADAP, and it'll be the first thing that comes up. Remember that, that's important. So anyway, going back to draw mode, and we're gonna go over fills. So the fill tool here. Now the fill tool, 
There are some limitations that you have to get around. You cannot make a donut fill. You cannot make a fill with an invisible hole inside of it. But anyway, we're, we're, we're picking the fill tool. Remember the three things, tool, layer, and material. We're picking the fill tool. The fill layer, it's got to be green down here, which one you're on. Fill layer and a fill material. So I'm going to pick the skin material and just start filling things in here. See? And if, you know, if you can't, if it's just open, it'll give you a message saying, unable to fill. And this is the thing. Watch when it, see, let's say you make a hundred frames with this checkerboard thing. You made this big animation and you're like, oh shit, I don't want these squares to be orange. I want these squares to be blue. This is why I was telling you about the materials. Uh, let me uh, let me open up my the thing that I was just talking about. My like my wolf objects in here. Look, now that you see this scene, now that you see what everything that I did before, these are each individual grease pencil objects. Wolf here. I'm gonna go down to shut up and eat your fucking the bajol. grease pencil here. See, Wolf has a lines of fills, a mouth, and glint. Glint, the glint layer, is just these little glowing things that aren't affected by light. So if you're wondering what the glint layer is, it's those little things there. Just the thing on his, the little shiny parts on his eyes. So this is my grease pencil object, just like we went over before. These are the layers. Like, I can make the lines layer invisible. I can make the fill layer invisible. I can make the mouth layer invisible. These are the, the layers that you were just looking at. Now I've got all these frames. See, this is the dope sheet. This is what a dope sheet looks like for Wolf. Like all the frames changing. See like his blink there, then a slight eyeball movement. Here now, look at Farah. Same thing. See, like this hold here, you see she's not moving at all. And then I've got four frames of change here. It's a blink. Like her lines and fills are changing and, and the glint layer changes there too because it's invisible. See the glint disappears. If you, if if it didn't, then you then it would look like that, see? Because that each one of these has to change for the blink. And then the turn here, see? These are all the frames of like the lines layer, the fill layer, everything. The mouth layer, I could turn, you know. Actually, I did make the mouths individual here, even though I didn't have to, because she's not saying anything. But anyway. Okay. And you see here, you'll notice that she leans down. Okay. And then for this for this entire duration, the only keyframe that changes is this mouth layer. See here, if, if if you know if you know any of this stuff in in Adobe Animate, you already know what all of this means. So like you see, all of the frames, the line fill, glint, everything changes, and then the body stops moving here. And for a little bit, for this much, the only thing that is moving is her mouth. See, see there, all of this, her body is perfectly still. Her body is these frames down here. That's your line layer and your fill layer. This layer is just the mouth. And then you see here, she starts to turn and then it becomes another grease pencil object here. I have a separate object for each angle. It makes it easier. And you see like right here, the body moves and then here it stops moving. And now it's just the mouth layer that changes. See, her body doesn't change past here. So this is what, this is the dope sheet. This is the, you know, now if, if I wanted to actually move this object around and change all of that stuff, those keyframes would be on the regular timeline. That's just the timeline. But for the frames of artwork that is changing, that's on the dope sheet. So to answer your question from earlier, that's the difference between the regular timeline and the dope sheet. If you had animation frames, 
than it, but you wanted this her to be animated but at the same time you wanted to actually move it in 3d space see like right here there are no keyframes on our timeline. I can move that here, hit I, add location keyframe, and then here, move it over here, and hit I, and add available, and see what happens. See? This is to change the location, rotation, and scale of an object. That is what uh, the, the timeline is for. The dope sheet is it, like the, the the grease pencil dope sheet is just for the actual artwork changes, like in Adobe Animate and whatnot. So anyway, the reason that I wanted to come over here for your fills and everything, you got Wolf here in this whole scene. All these frames of Wolf moving. Let's say I wanted Wolf's eye patch to be darker, a darker color. Any other program that I'd use, I'd have to go back and refill every single frame. F pick the darker color, frame, fill, change frame, fill, change frame, fill. In this, remember, it has materials just like a 3D object does. So, you go in here and find, I even have a name, Wolf Eye Patch. I just go in and change it to a different color. I can make it green or, or, or any color I want. And see, it's, it's automatically changed on every frame because each of these frames is referencing that material. I want to give him a, a, a nicer looking jacket. I'm gonna make Farah her her jogging suit red instead of green. Every single frame. It's just one click. It's one click and everything is changed in the whole scene. I can make this a scene where they're babysitting Marcus. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is such a huge file. Yeah, no, but, but seriously, though, if I wanted to make it Marcus McCloud, I guess I could do that. <laughs> the cinnamon bun kid. But, but but anyway, anyway, like once you have your animations done and you do it by these materials, you want to change one little itty bitty color. You just you pick the color that you have have chosen for that, you know, aspect of the character and you change it and automatically everything is already done. You don't have to go back and fill anything. Even just slight changes. What's going to be more likely is you're going to have a character like like Farah. It's like I don't like her fur that light. I want to make it a little bit darker. And there you go. You do one thing and it's done. You don't have to go back and fill every frame with a paint bucket tool. I'm hoping this is all making sense. He's been it too. <sighs> yep. So, I'm going to go to a new project again. I'm going to start a new project, completely new project, keypad zero, to get into the view.
We're going to click on the default cube and delete it. And now when we hit Shift A to add a grease pencil object, we're going to add a blank one. Completely blank. And there you go. It's added. You see the dot. If you hit G, you're moving it around. Right click to cancel. And you, it's added a blank one with no materials. So while you have the blank grease pencil object selected, go to the material tab and click new material. And it will make you, you know, material one, call it, name it something, double click on it, say black stroke or whatever. No, no, if, if I make a video about uh, grease pencil, I'll, I'll have to like write up all the, the chapters with bullets and everything. Uh, I want it to be legit. But anyway, you've got your black stroke material made. This is the difference here. If you want it to be a fill material or a stroke material, that's all you change here. You check one and uncheck the other, or you can check them both. But anyway, we're going to leave it as just a stroke with black. And we're going to go up here and go to draw mode. And we're in key, in key, to bring this up and go to the tool tab right there and change pencil to ink pen. And I'm going to turn off the floor and the axis here. I don't need that. And I'm going to draw a, a thingy. We're gonna let's let's draw Fox McCloud, just a simple stick figure. Oh, what is it doing? Hold on, what have I done? Oh, right. Look, you have to go down here, set your dope sheet, and set dope sheet to grease pencil. And I don't, I don't think we even have a layer to draw on yet. So make sure you just have G pencil selected up here. And now for all of the, the properties of your grease pencil object, they're going to be on this little guy right here, this green icon. This is the grease pencil icon. So we're going to click on that. And this is where all of your layers are. Why is it not letting me draw? something god damn it do I have it selected there yeah okay so I don't know why it's not letting me even draw on this one this might be a bug yeah delete all your your layers on your grease pencil object that that's kind of fucking weird I'm sorry it shouldn't do that and click new layer and you click that layer and make sure that you're active on it well yeah expand it it's got to be green and it's on green and you're on draw mode then you can start drawing and you can draw 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 practice drawing and then hitting control tab and going to edit mode and select W changes the type of your select box, like circle select or, you know, rectangle select or whatever. I like lasso select. You can see them up here right there as you hit W and cycle through them. Or you can click right here and hold and go through. I like lasso. And pick some X delete the points that you selected or X and delete strokes everything connected to them I have shortcuts for both and then you know control tab to go back to drawing mode just make sure you have a layer selected and your tool and your material over here so draw a circle draw a circle whatever I'm going to draw a fox so I'm going to draw a circle have it intersect and ears it's Fox McCloud the best frame I've ever drawn and 
give him his, you know, little things here. So, you know, and, and whatever, just, just draw some shapes that you can fill in. So now we need a fill material. Because, see, we only have, if you go down here and go to materials for this object that we're selected, we only have this one material. And just remember those slots that I showed you. I'm going to add a couple slots. See, don't even have to use them yet. Just added a couple of empty slots. The second one here, I'm going to make a new material. And we're going to make this his main fur color. So I'm going to double click on it and call it Fox Fur 1. And then we're going to change it from, we're going to turn off stroke and turn on fill. And for the base color of the fill, raise this up and find whatever whatever you think Fox McCloud's primary fur color would be right about there now I if you want to take a color that you already have and make a duplicate of it and make it slightly different so I just want to take a copy of Fox fur one call it Fox fur two and make it slightly brighter so in this third empty slot here you know make another slot up there if you need to we're going to, instead of clicking new, don't click new. Undo if you did. We're going to click on this and go over to this one and pick an already existing material, Fox for one. So now we have the same material in a second slot. Now to make a copy of this, like its own unique copy, is this button right here. New, like add a new material based on that one. So now this one's called Fox for one dot zeros or whatever. We're going to edit this and just call it Fox Fur 2. You have to click that button to make a unique copy, otherwise it will be changing the original. So now that we're selecting Fox Fur 2, I'm going to go down here, grab this, and just make it, you know, do, do what you do to make it a brighter color. There. See, now we have the two different colors. So, going over to our picture, I have, remember the three things you select, you fill tool, we don't have a fill layer, we don't have a fill layer yet, and this one's called GP, so I'm going to double click on that and call that line layer, because, you know, that's, that's the layer that we're drawing on. We need to have a fill layer. If you've ever drawn anything in any computer program, you know you have a colors layer and a line art layer. So to do another one, we're going to go back to the green thing. This is all the grease pencil properties, your onion skins, everything for this object. And we're going to make a new layer. It's just like adding a, a material. You click plus. Now, but it needs to be underneath the line layer. So we're going to double click on it, call it fill layer and hit enter, and then these buttons move it up and down, like effects, plugins, or whatever. Just make sure the fill layer, you can see it changing down here too. Now the fill layer is under the line layer. So now we've got the bucket tool picked. The, fi the fill tool, the fill layer, and now the fill material under your materials. We're gonna select Fox Fur 1 and just click right here. Now, as I said, you cannot have donut fills. Like, see, notice that these aren't empty. When I just click to fill it, you, you have to make a separate material that cuts out a color if you want that. Like if, like if he got a, a hole shot in his ear, like that and see what I mean and you, you go in to fill it see it's like oh fuck well it, it, yeah that's one thing that most people will see blender and see that and be like I can't make a hole in the middle of the fill well this is stupid never mind no no you can you have to make a you have to make a separate material it's weird I get it but you know 
it's it's a little thing it's it's like learning a different language it's not just english grammar in another language like in russian you don't just translate well okay what's russian for i what's russian for need to go to the store you know in russian it's not i need to go to the store it would be more like to me is required going inside of store like like kind of like the 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 structure is completely different just like in this you've got to learn a, a little bit of a different language of how to do things to get the same result if you can't do that if you're scared of that you'll never adapt to this program but anyway we're gonna go ahead and feel oh, let's make another material let's make solid black for the nose so on this third one here we're gonna make we're gonna add one that we already have fox for one or two whatever and we're gonna make a unique copy of it with this button remember to make a, a slots are up here to add a slot or delete one and we're gonna call it just black color whatever and go down here to the fill and just change it drag it down change it to black when you click off it takes a second to update but there now we have a black fill the only difference between these two is this is this has stroke checked and this one has fill check see if i did this now it's exactly identical to the stroke like there so let's fill in his nose and remember the three things your fill tool your fill layer and your fill color i'm going to click the nose and there and now fox fur two we're going to click put that there put one there put one there and the ears now see these are on your fill layer and your line layer so you know the neat stuff that you can do here is limitless and yeah you can fill these in you know whatever and like i said you, you want to change that color to something else you know it changes it for everything because you're going by there's another way you can do it by just doing vertex coloring and all this shit i don't touch it i don't touch it because if you use that and then later on you want to change the color you have to do it on every frame the way i do it you have all your animations Let, let's do another one okay i'm going to go to edit mode select all of this crap and delete it so now we have our two keyframes here one for line layer and one for fill layer I'm going to go to the timeline, back to regular timeline, and I'm going to set this to five frames. So our entire animation here, I'm playing it, is five frames of animation. These five frames. I'm going to even go back to the, the dope sheet. It's playing these five frames. Notice he's staying perfectly still because he only has one keyframe thing. He has a frames on frame one and it holds until he gets a new one. So on frame two, let's make a new keyframe. So here you can hit I and we're gonna do insert blank keyframe all layers. There, see? now we have frame one which has the line layer and the fill layer and now frame two which has line layer and fill layer and everything but it's all empty so let's say we wanted we didn't want to do the undo go back until we only have one frame so we still got this frame thank you chubby khaki and let's say we wanted to copy this frame and just change it slightly. So you go to frame two, where it's still holding the first when there's no new diamonds to show, and hit I, and we're gonna duplicate active keyframe all layers. So now we have two frames, even though they're exactly the same, this one is unique. So I'm gonna go to edit mode, and I'm gonna select all of this, that we, you know, line layer and fill layer and just you know i'm gonna hit r and rotate it 
I'm going to hit G and move it here. Now I'm going to go back to drawing mode. So now we have frame one, frame two, unique frame, and then see it holds there. So now, same thing. We can go to this frame and hit I and duplicate active keyframe all layers. Go to edit mode, grab it, move it over here, rotate it, same thing. And then move it to the next frame, frame four. And in draw mode, hit I, same thing, duplicate active keyframe, all layers. Go back to edit mode with control tab to edit mode. Grab G, move forward R, rotate, grab. And then same thing, frame five. Go back to draw mode, hit I, duplicate active keyframe, select every A, select everything. Then move it forward, rotate, what, whatever. Just like I'm just showing you a basic thing, you could redraw the frames. And there, that's, that's a basic animation. And if I wanted to change his fur color, you go to the material of the object here. And it's like, I don't want it to be a fox, I want it to be a wolf. And change the colors or whatever. Now, you have your object going back out to object mode in the world. I'm going to let it play, see? You've got your object now. Go into render mode with the Z key. Now you're in rendered mode. Click the light bulb up here, change it to something. Move it around, see? Now you've got a, an object in here that's being affected by the light. Now, clicking on your grease pencil object, go over here to the wrench and add a modifier. You can add a, a noise modifier. Here, I'm going to show you something. Uh, delete the noise modifier. I'm going to delete these frames down here to where it's just a hold. I'm going to delete all those. So it's still playing, see? but it doesn't have any new frames. I'm gonna click on this guy and add a noise modifier. Randomize, you're gonna open it. It's doing it every four frames. I'm setting it to one. So set the random to one, Let's see. And I'm gonna change the position just about a little bit and you've gotta change the noise. Wait, no, noise scale, my bad. There we go. Noise scale. Position, like how wild it changes it, or if you just wanted to change it a little bit. You know, and there you go. You don't have to redraw every frame slightly different to get squiggle vision, like Dr. Katz or home movies or whatever. And this is your scale of the noise, see? If you just make it like zero or whatever, it's just there's no noise at all. But if you make this bigger, then it makes the lines a little more detailed and intricate. So that's one, that's one modifier. I'm gonna add another one. Uh, no, actually, no, we're not gonna do modifiers. I could, I could add a, a mirror modifier. You know, you can, you can set it to whatever axis. You know, it, if you wanna draw something that gets mirrored, there's a mirror modifier in there. Effects, I'm gonna delete the mirror modifier and go to effects, it's under the wrench. Add effect, rim lighting that you can do rim lighting if you want to set it add overlay multiply whatever 
Everybody always asks, oh, does it have rim lighting? Yes, it has rim lighting. You can do anything, follow your dreams. It has glow effect. It has uh, shadow, drop shadow. If you just want a basic 2D shadow that's, that doesn't affect anything. If you don't want it to be affected by the noise, well, actually, yeah, you can't change that. It's all is. But I hope all of this is 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 making sense. You can go in here. You know, I want to make him talk. Let's go back to the dope sheet. I'm gonna just, if you want, you can click here and hit Shift D and just make a copy of it. And go here and delete that. And fill it in. There. Now you have a talking animation. We're just going to edit mode. Select, set it to vertices, select all of that and hit R, rotate it, move it around. I hope this is making sense. I hope I'm, I'm not, like, confusing anybody. Yeah, this is... And that's an object. That, that is basically how grease pencil objects work. You know, you hit F12 and open up your your image editor and set it to render result and there you go there's your there's your your render if you want it to be see through you go up here to your scene settings go down to the film and check transparent and there you go look at that i'm going to grab this move it here scale it down with s and there he is i i i i hit f12 and there you go, there's your 1080p PNG with a see-through background with alpha. You want it to be 4K, you go here to your output, it's set to 1080, you just click on this, hit 200%. You hit F12 and render. And there it is at 4K. Keypad 1 is 100%, 2 is 50, 4 is 25, 8 is 12.5%. If you have this rendered and you want to save it, hold Alt and hit S. Brings up a window to save it as a PNG. Anyway, that's how you use Grease Pencil. Now, a little bit more before I go. One last thing. You know this little orange dot is the origin of a file. You rotate, see it rotates around that point. It scales to that point, the origin. When you draw from this camera angle here and you're drawing stuff, it is projecting it forward from your camera view until it hits that orange dot. Watch when I draw on it. I draw all this stuff here, right? Now I'm going to move my camera angle over here and draw. And over here and draw. No matter what I draw, it projects it from the current camera angle to that little orange dot right there, the zero, zero, zero point of your object known as the origin. 
So when you see the people online doing those those 3D faces that they draw, like that, and then they then they go over here and do the the whatever thing. That's how they're doing it. Because whatever camera angle you're drawing at, it projects it until it gets to that dot. To set that, to change that, you go into drawing mode and it's this box here. This is project from, and this is project to. You change this to here. Here's one. We're going to make a new, well, no, no, no. Hold on a minute. I'm going to go into view, hit shift, go into object mode, hit shift A, add a UV sphere and now I'm going to go in here in drawing mode while selecting my my object I'm going to edit mode delete all of its lines and now when I'm drawing on it see it just kind of it's projecting to that origin which right now as you can see is inside the cube if you wanted to draw on this thing but have it like lay over the surface of stuff behind it you would change its stroke placement from origin to surface and there's an offset like how far above the surface you want it to be so I can draw and see it, it puts it on I'm going to turn that shadow thing off it's just it's kind of confusing I'm going to turn all the effects off I see there like I'm, I'm in and Charlie Brown looking motherfucker. I see there, like, see it, it, it lays it over the surface. And it's still an object, you know, it's still, you know, the grease pencil. But see now, if I go in and while I'm up there and, and draw over it again, it lays it over the surface still. So your grease pencils do exist in 3D space. Now, the most important part. This is the most important function. This is the first one that, that I had. Yeah, yeah, like when you see the people that have like a, a 3D model and they're doing the cool sketch over it, that's how they do it. They just go into draw mode and set it to surface. This is how far above the surface you want it to be. If it, if it sticks up too far, you want to make this number a little bit smaller. But anyway, let's say you're in this view and you've got all this stuff you have it exactly how you want it to look, this thing's gone. And you've drawn your thing, and you're like, I want it to be flat. But when I get out of it, oh God, like it's all, you know, the depth is weird. I want it to be a flat image from this view. So you would go into edit mode, select everything, and hit F3 to search, and type in reproject and pick reproject strokes and project from view. I've never, ever, ever used any of those other settings. I always pick project from view. And now when I pop out and look at it, it's been flattened. Based on that origin point, from my view to the origin point. So if you're ever drawing and you go into sculpt mode, which you can do, check that out. Isn't that great? But you come out here and go, eh, and it's got an actual Z depth. And you're like, this is how I want the picture to look. It looks fine, but this shit will not do. It needs to be flat. You'd hit keypad zero, go in the view, tab, select everything, F3 to search. I have a keyboard shortcut set for it, but it doesn't by default. So you would choose reproject strokes, project view, and there it's flattened. It will look exactly the same as it did before you reprojected from the view, but it will be completely flat. You reproject a surface. Let me see. I want to see if you can do that. I'm going to add a mesh UV sphere. Let's see. I assume this is what you mean. So yeah, we're gonna lay that over the surface, right? So go back into camera, grab it. Let's see if it'll work. You reproject strokes. You have to go into edit mode. It's an edit mode function, not drawing mode. 
and click surface. Yep, you mean like that? <laughs> the reason this part didn't is because it did from that view it had nothing. So yeah, that, that's that's how you do it. Like those cool sidewalk drawings of Spider-Man jumping into a hole, and if you stand and look at it from a specific angle, it looks 3D. Like that's how you would you would do that. Well, I think that's going to be it. I hope some of that made some sense. If you have any other questions about Grease Pencil, come in here while I'm streaming and ask away. <laughs>